Hello and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. This is a YouTube live event and today is Monday, March 1st and the year is 2021. If you like fun folds, you are in for a treat because tonight's fun fold is actually has a 3D flair to it, but it's still a card and it still fits in a standard A2 envelope. I am using promotional product that is going to begin tomorrow and you're going to love it. In addition to those products, I have tons of tips about tonight's card. Now, I have a little tip for you too before we get started. You're not gonna wanna miss the link that is down in the video description below, which is gonna leave you over to my website. And therefore today, you're gonna be able to download this. It is a free project tutorial with pictures and cutting dimensions and a supply list for tonight's card. And here's the best part, I've got a template for you so you don't have to do any guesswork at home. I've made it nice and easy for you. Now, this is your first time joining me live. I'd like to give you a special welcome and thank you for the rest of you who have come back to watch, whether you are here for the live or for the replay, we welcome you. I want to introduce you to Megan. Megan is my assistant and she is a real person. We are separated by 800 miles, but she spends her time helping us during the live chat tonight. Because quite honestly, when you have questions or need links, it is impossible for me to keep up with you while I'm trying to stamp. So Megan is here. You'll see a tool symbol in front of Megan's name and reach out to her if you need anything. In addition to that, you're among lots of other paper crafters who are wonderfully friendly and supportive. So feel free to chat with one another. I come back and I read every single comment, whether you are here for the live or watch the replay. And if you want to chat, you're gonna to need to sign into your YouTube account, which is required by YouTube, which is your Gmail address. That is a YouTube thing, not a Lisa thing. I think we're all set. Are you all ready to get started on tonight's fun fold card? It's called a double diamond fun fold card. All right, let's turn the camera down. Let's get you all zoomed in. Here we go. Okay, let me get that tripod zoomed in and let's just see what your look, your little area looks like. I'm clicking over to my iPad so I can get the same view that you're looking at to make sure that I am in your camera view. All right, we're good. I've got a piece of So Saffron cardstock. Now this measures four inches by 10 inches. And as I said to you before we got started, I have a template, <laughs> template, listen to me, I can't even talk tonight. I have a template for you that's gonna make this super duper easy. But if you wanna follow along first, I think it's gonna make the template even easier. I'm gonna start with doing some scoring and some marking. And I'm using my trimmer here. I love my paper trimmer because it includes both a scoring and a cutting blade. That's gonna make cutting and scoring super, super easy. I can leave them on the track at the same time. And I love that this guide is clear. There's a nice straight edge here across the top, which is going to ensure that you can keep your paper straight. Now this trimmer also has an extended arm, which is going to extend just past 17 inches. So if you like to make boxes and fun folds, and of course, if you're a scrapbooker, this is gonna come in super duper handy for you. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make our score lines on this first. You're gonna do one vertical score line at two inches, which is the halfway mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line this up here. I'm gonna keep my paper nice and close here to the top. And at the two inch mark, we are going to score. And then we're going to open this up and we're gonna turn it. So this is now horizontal and we're gonna do two more score lines. The first one is going to be at two inches, which I'm lining up once again. And the next one is going to be at eight inches, which is all the way over here. And then we're gonna do another one. Believe it or not, that's really the extent of the straight lines. Now we're gonna do some marking and then we're gonna connect the dots. Very, very simple. So I've got my mechanical pencil here. I really should be a spokesperson for this BIC. I get asked this an awful lot, so I wanna show it to you and I wanna make sure that you know what it is. This Bic Mechanical Pencil number two, it's a 0 0.9 millimeter, I love it. The lead is very, very soft. The eraser works like a charm, great for paper crafting. This is not a sponsored video, so they do not pay me for this. But what I like about this is that you can extend the lead on here to get through your trimmer so that you can do your score lines and your little markings all at the same time. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start on this end of the paper. And we are using this only to do some measuring. So I'm gonna line this up at the four inch mark, which is here. And we are gonna do a little pencil mark right inside that cutting track where we would normally cut. We're gonna do a little pencil mark there, 
and a pencil mark there, nice and simple. Now we're gonna slide over to the six inch mark and we're gonna do the exact same thing, one here at the top and one here at the bottom. I realize those are gonna be very, very light and difficult for you to see, but that's okay. It's all gonna make sense in just a moment. Now we're gonna make some marks right on top of the center score line. The first one, line up your paper at three inches. Whoop, let's make sure I get that right, three inches. And we're gonna make that right here, right on the score line. So there's gonna be a little tiny plus sign there, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna move it over to seven inches. And then we're gonna close that and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So a little horizontal, a little vertical. So we've got a little bit of a plus line there. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm not sure how much you're actually gonna be able to see, but there's lines here at the top and the bottom and then here on the sides. All we're going to do is connect the dots and score them. Now you can use a ruler and of course a stylus tool or a bone folder, whatever is easier for you. But I am a big fan of my trimmer simply because this guide is clear. And that's gonna allow me to see through here and navigate those pencil marks right inside that area. Let me close this and come in a little bit closer. I wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to see. So let me zoom you in just a little bit. And I'm gonna move down. Hopefully I'm inside your camera view. So I'm lining up my pencil mark here and my pencil mark here. Just gonna do the very best that you can and you're going to score. And then I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna navigate my paper Make sure I stay inside your camera view again. And I'm going to line up my pencil marks in that track. So I've got one here and one here. And then this time I'm gonna bring my blade here to the bottom and I'm gonna go right up to that pencil mark. All right, so far so good. We're gonna do the exact same thing now on this side. If those of you are not familiar with what the products I am using, these are Stampin' Up! products. I am a Stampin' Up! independent demonstrator. You can find all of them in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. I offer exclusive ordering rewards. If you use my host code, you're going to absolutely love those. Free tutorials and all kinds of um, Live with Lisa private events. So would love to have you check those out. All right, there we go. We've got all of our score lines done. Let me go ahead and move that off to the side. You'll recall that I mentioned to you that I have a template for you, and this is what it looks like. You're going to see that I have my horizontal measurement here, my vertical measurements here, and then in the pink circles, you're going to see where I put those marks for you to make the pencil lines. This is all part of the project sheet for tonight's card. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to fold this in half. I do recommend a bone folder because I like nice crisp creases. I am going to erase those pencil marks so they're not too obtrusive when we're all finished. And like I said, boy, do I love this pencil. I did make these a little heavier than I would normally because I wanted to make sure that you're going to be able to see them. So we're going to go ahead and erase those. All right, fold that in half and then go ahead and use your bone folder. And I'm going to come across this and I'm just going to crease. I want nice crisp creases on my fun fold. The vertical lines that are here, we're going to fold back. So there is one on this side. And then my other one is here. I almost lost it. And I'm going to fold that down. All right. So now you're going to see that we have that kind of wide diamond shape that's here in the middle. Now, the easiest way to do this is to actually fold the cardstock in. So let's go ahead and do this. And let me just take a quick look at my pattern. I want to make sure I fold this the right way. So I'm going to come up like this. And you can score it like this with your finger. But to be quite honest with you, I found that a little bit troublesome only because when you get here in the corner, it kind of buckles up the cardstock. I have seen where people actually take it like this and they crease it halfway, but I find that the cardstock breaks, it kind of almost like breaks down the fibers. So I take my finger and I come inside here and just kind of crease that up to that point. The rest really is quite easy. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this fold, kind of get my cardstock to cooperate with me. Here we go. We're taking the two edges in. I'm gonna give you a vertical look so that you can see this. These are these two creases. These are going to swivel because of those inside diagonal lines. And all we're going to do is we're going to pinch. Now, I know that doesn't look like much, does it? But I promise you it's gonna work great. Here, I do not recommend the bone folder because we have multiple layers of cardstock underneath here and I don't want those ridges to show. So take your fingers and just kind of press over the top. This is now going to become the card base. All right, so let me go ahead, let's just set that aside for just a moment. And then I'm gonna bring in some stamps. 
And you're going to see me use this once again. Now, if you were here with me last week, you remember me showing you the stamp apparatus. This is the stamp positioning tool. I absolutely love it. It comes with two plates. So I only have one in today. They do come out and you can actually do hinge stamping, which is fantastic. In addition to that, you are able to not actually have to handle a very large stamp, which is going to work beautifully for this one. Now, if you're looking at this wondering where this large background stamp is, I have quite a surprise for you. It's really not a background stamp. It is actually one, two, three, four, five, six stamps in one, which means you're going to stamp it once. You are going to die cut it once because the dies for this will die cut them all individually. So let me show you how this works. It is called Butterfly Brilliance. So I took it out and I am going to bring in a piece of white cardstock here. I've got a piece buried here on my desk and I'm gonna tack that down. Now, typically with red rubber stamps, because they have a foam layer on them, you do not need the foam mat on your stamp apparatus. You could take that off. This is primarily for photopolymer stamps that are completely clear. However, I have basal joint arthritis and it's very difficult for me to push. I have found by adding this, even with my red rubber stamps, that this works famously for me. You're going to need to experiment to see what works well for you. I'm going to put the stamp face down on my cardstock where I want it. My magnet is here. It is super duper strong, which is why I added uh, layers and layers of washi tape or even duct tape will work. That's going to hold this down. There are two magnets included with the stamp apparatus. You don't want to bring them into close contact with each other because they are very, very strong. And because of that strength, they can snap. So you want to be very careful. I find one is more than sufficient. Now that this is face down where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close that hinge door and that cling stamp is going to stick perfectly to this side. Now you're going to see that there's a slight incline here. So I'm going to take that stamp case and I'm going to put that right underneath there to make that nice and even. I'm going to stamp my butterflies in Memento Black Ink, which is my ink of choice since I'm going to be doing some coloring with alcohol-based stamp and blends markers. I like to give my images a little bit of a twist with my ink pad. I find that's going to get my solid areas covered really well, and it's going to cover up those line areas really, really well. If you happen to get a little bit of this ink on the clear mat or on the clearest little cutting pad here, don't worry. It rubs right off because remember I said this is water-based ink because we're going to use alcohol-based markers. Large, large stamp. Take your time. Don't miss a spot. Then we are going to close it. And then you are going to rub. Now, as I said to you, I have difficulty with strength between my thumb and my fingers because of my basal joint. So I find the stamp apparatus to be a really great tool for me when I am using these large stamps. So I'm just going to go ahead and press and I'm going to lift. Oh, look how pretty. But do you see right here? I kind of missed a spot. So I'm going to go close this up again and I'm going to push. Now, let me tell you another secret that another YouTube video person shared with me, a viewer. This is a dry erase eraser. And she said, if you get one of those and you rub over that, then you don't have to use the strength of your hands. And I was like, oh my gosh, is that stinking brilliant. Do you see how much more vibrant this becomes? This is a great, great thing for background stamps or if you want perfect placement every single time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this image off. And you might be wondering, how do you clean this? So I took a half of a Stampin' Chamois. It's just damp with tap water, and I'm just simply going to wipe this off. Now, you might be thinking, well, I don't have a stamp positioner. I might be new to stamping, or, geez, I don't want a stamp positioner. I won't have a use for it. So I want to give you another tip. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way, and I'm going to take my stamp case and move that as well. And I believe I am going to flip this over, and I'm going to use the other side. So this is the one we did with the stamp apparatus. Let's say now you just want to do things what we're going to call the easy way or the old school way, whatever you prefer. I'm going to add this to my clear stamping block. Obviously, with my hands, this is very difficult for me to manhandle. Maybe the same for you. So let me give you a tip. Turn it upside down and you're going to ink it very much like we did when it was on the stamp apparatus. I give a little twist to cover those solid areas really well. And then I tap to make sure all my outline images are covered well. All right, so I think that you get the idea. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the blank side of our cardstock. Remember, we're just gonna do this as an example. 
and we're going to lay this on top. And then what I do is I take my hand and I rub. If you are using a piece of cardstock that is already pre-cut to the front layer of your card, you're going to want to fold a piece of scratch paper over the top to keep your fingers from getting all wet and dirty. And then what you're going to do is when you feel like you've traced out the design well, you're going to go ahead and you're going to lift. And that is going to give you, look, exact same thing. So I've given you two options here on how you can use these absolutely beautiful, stunning stamps. I don't know about you, but whenever I can do double duty, which means stamp once and die cut once and get a bunch of images, makes me super happy. All right, the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of coloring. And I want to teach you a really fun alcohol-based coloring trick. So I'm going to use several colors that are really kind of not too intuitive for my butterfly. And I'm going to focus on this large swallowtail right here. And I think that's what I'm calling the name correctly. And I'm sure my butterfly enthusiasts are going to fix me and correct that if I'm wrong. I am not going to color the whole thing. I have one that's already finished for you. But what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of two-tone here with a little bit of blending. And most often, people don't realize that they can take multiple colors of Stampin' Blends markers and mix them together to get a custom shade, which is what I was after for this project. So I'm going to work in this area here first. This right now is the Saffron Blends Combo, so you get the light and the dark. And when I'm coloring, I like to make sure they're on separate sides of my work surface because it never fails. So I sometimes get them mixed up. I prefer to use the lightest shade first. They are dual ended. So you're going to pick the one that works best for your hand. Let's go ahead and just work on this small area here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my saffron color here to those beautiful wings. And the most important thing I think I can tell you when you're talking alcohol-based markers is be patient. If you're like me and you love to color, you're going to find that you want that alcohol to evaporate just a little bit before you lay down the next color. When your markers are brand new, that alcohol content is very, very thick and they tend to be very moist. Then what you can do is you can come in with your darker color and you can add some highlights. So let's just say I want to add a little bit here and a little bit here, but I know I'm going to do some blending, so I'm not going to get too carried away. These lighter pigmented colors, the dark and the light are very, very closely related, which is fine. But you can go back over the lightest shade and you can carry that dark into the light to get more of a blended look. But tonight I want to teach you something else, a totally different color. This is Bermuda Bay. I am actually going to add this to here. So again, I'm using that brush tip and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to start from the inside and I'm going to pull a little bit of color out and I'm going to do it here as well. And I'm going to work a little bit down here and a little bit inside of here. Now, of course, you can add as much as you'd like. And if you want to, you can even go back over this area to add a little bit of intensity. Again, I am looking to let that color evaporate just a little bit because there is a darker shade as well. I like to gravitate the darker shade and just place this a little bit in the center. Now remember, this beautiful stamp set and these dies are also going to include exclusive designer series papers that start tomorrow, March 2nd. I cannot wait to share them with you. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the yellow right over the top. Now you might be thinking, ew, yeah, it's gonna turn a little bit of green, but then I have a secret step for you. So let's go ahead and take this and let's pull these together. Because remember, when you mix alcohol-based markers, you're going to get the exact same type of color concept you would if you mix two different color paints. So yellow and blue are going to make green. Again, letting that alcohol evaporate. And this is the secret weapon. This is the color lifter, and I don't think it gets nearly as much airtime as it should. In addition to helping to lift color, it will move color. So I'm going to use the brush tip on this. And again, allowing that to evaporate. Watch what I'm gonna do. This is invisible ink. I'm gonna come over this and I'm gonna lighten this. It's actually gonna to start to do it right before your eyes. The beauty about this is it's going to look more shaded than two-toned colors when it evaporates and becomes more of its true tone. Your blends is going to pick up some of that pigmentation. My tip for you is just to make sure that it runs clear before you cap it and put it away so that you don't transfer any pigmentation to another project. All right, we're gonna pretend that this is all colored and it looks just like that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But let me show you the fantastic part of this entire bundle. And that is this. These are the Brilliant Wing dies. Now, if you think this alone is gonna be cool, wait till you see this, look. 
It is a huge die set. And here's the thing I absolutely love about this first sheet. Remember I told you that was one image, right? One die. So you're gonna place this right over the top, super easy to align. My tip for you is to look for where the antennas are and you are gonna be good to go. And then when it die cuts, it's gonna come out like this. And are you ready? Oh my gosh. I love when I can maximize all my stamping and all my cranking because you're gonna get a multitude of images. And then here is the one that I colored before you joined me. Remember that swallowtail we just talked about? I have now all these other butterflies ready to go for other projects. Now, if you're a scrapbooker, you are going to love this because all you have to do now is color them in. Or you can do what I did. Let me show you what I did here. Inside the stamp case, and of course my stamp would be here, I put a little tiny Ziploc bag and I even colored some when I was in a coloring frenzy because I was just having so much fun relaxing. And I threw them in here and they are ready to go for my next project. I put a little tiny glue dot here just to make it super easy when I open my stamp case. Wonderful, wonderful tip for you. Stamp once, die cut once, get all your images. Now this wasn't cool enough in itself. I wanna show you some other cool things about this die. Now you'll recall that there were a couple other pieces on here when I took this one off, okay? Let me show you this one. This has kind of like a brick background, doesn't it? Look what I did. I actually die cut it for you so that you could see it. Do you see it leaves an open pattern? Isn't this fun? This one leaves that wonderful splatter pattern. Just think of all the different card types you can use this for. And then this one here, look at the texture on that. Isn't that fun? Fantastic, fantastic. I really, really think you're gonna love this die set. So this is just the first sheet of the dies and you'll recall, I said there was a second sheet as if this couldn't get any better, right? <laughs> okay, look at these details. Is this not stunning? I'm telling you what, look at the antennas. They're fine, they're beautiful. And I want you to know this was one pass through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. These laser cuts are stunning. So the beauty of these is these are individual. So you can actually die cut layers to go over your stamped images. I know, squeal, right? I know, as if there weren't more possibilities in the paper crafting world, I think we've covered them. All right, so let's go back to our project now. I did choose to add some Wink of Stella to my butterfly because I love shimmery wings. And I don't know if you can see that or not, if it's picking up on the camera, do you see it? Now let's talk a little bit about Wink of Stella. When you first buy it, there's a black spacer here. You need to take the cap off and remove the spacer, give it a good shake, and then here on the barrel, it says push and push, and you are going to squeeze it. And what's going to happen is that shimmer paint is gonna come down through the barrel to the tip. I'm gonna recommend you do that over scratch paper the very first time, because you're gonna get a good blob the first time, and then it is ready to go, and you just brush it on. Unlike glitter and glue, there is really no waiting time for it to dry because it is alcohol-based, absolutely stunning. Isn't this beautiful? All right, let's finish up our card. You'll recall that we had this piece here, which was our card base. It unfolded on me, so I'm gonna fold it back up. Here we go, we've got our piece here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate these quadrants, and as if this whole series of products could not come any better, you are going to love this. This is a tiny, tiny piece of designer series paper. I know you're like, could you get it smaller? <laughs> no, because it's going to fit on the double diamond for this fold. Let me push this off to the side because you have got to see these papers. Now you are going to get a sheet, a package of 48 sheets. Now I want to show you these. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty. Look, look at the colors. I love the variety. The other thing is like all Stampin' Up! papers, they're double-sided, friends. And guess what? The dies will cut some of these butterflies on some of these papers, this one specifically. So look at the other side. Love them because they can be used for both masculine and feminine cards all year round without a theme. You're absolutely going to love this. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take our silicone craft sheet, which is one of my very favorite accessories here in the studio. I tend to be very, very zealous with my adhesive. So I'm gonna flip that paper over. I'm gonna add adhesive to my back side. That's gonna ensure that I keep my work surface sticky free. And I'm gonna add that to a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock. Now, the beauty of Stampin' Up! products 
is the color coordination. So remember, this was the same color that we used in the Stampin' Blends markers. So I did another one before you joined me, and I'm gonna flip that over, and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side of this. And then remember, this was the front of our card, and I'm gonna add those butterflies here. I love this pattern because there's no right or wrong direction because they can be flying sideways. They can be going straight up and down. Either way, it's going to look great. And then I'm going to add my other one over here. You're going to see I'm leaving a layer around the outside. Okay, now you're thinking, well, where does the card come into play? All right, let's work on that next. I've got some cardstock here. I've got a piece of Whisper White. I'm sorry, Whisper White, I'm regressing. It's now basic white. This is actually going to be the focal point of this card. This is where it's gonna house our greeting and our image. You're gonna to wanna to turn it on the diagonal. That's very, very important. I love my grid paper because look, it's going to help me to ensure that things are nice and straight. I am going to take my greeting. For this card, I chose Thinking of You, and I chose that from the Happy Thoughts stamp set. It is probably one of my favorite greetings from the mini catalog because it has a little something for everyone. Let's go ahead and use that same Memento black ink pad that we used before. Let's go ahead and ink that up and I'm gonna keep my paper on that diagonal one more time to try to keep it straight down here at the bottom and then we'll stamp. All right, let's go ahead and cap that because an open ink pad around here is a recipe for disaster. This now is going to get bordered on another piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock. Now remember, this is all going on the diagonal. So I want you to take your time and make sure that you've mounted it evenly because on the diagonal, I noticed that layers are a little bit more noticeable if they're not even. So you're looking for equal quadrants all the way around. But here's my next tip. Take another piece of that same size white cardstock and it's gonna go here. So I'm gonna add another piece to this. And again, all these cutting dimensions are on the template for you and in the project sheet making it nice and nice and simple for you. And again, looking for that exact same quadrant border all the way around, and then we're gonna tack that in place. This now goes here in the center. Now let's talk about adhering this so that it's nice and even. Do you see your center score line here? This is your little like cheat area. So you're gonna line this up so that your two points of your layer are going to equal on that score line. If necessary, I want you to flip this over and I want you to make a little pencil mark here and here if that's easier for you so that you can see. And then we're gonna use a couple dimensionals. So I've got one, two, and I think three is all I'm going to need. And then we're gonna add them here. So I want one here at the point. Let's make sure I got it going the right way. And then I'm gonna do two here on either side, staying below that halfway point. You know what? I'm gonna grab one more because I'm feeling brave and let's work right here in the center. I am very cognizant of making my dimensionals even because I know my card will be mailed and I wanna make sure it doesn't have any sagging points. This is my take your pick tool. I uh, love that putty tip because look, you can just pick up items with it, including sequins. I added an attachment that comes with it. This is the paper piercing tool. That's gonna to allow me to peel off those backings because Lord knows anything like this for me with arthritis is tough. This now is going to get adhered here. So remember, the card is open. We are looking to put this point and this point right along that score line, and you want to make sure the bottom half of your card does not extend past here. So that's really important. So I'm looking my very best to align this like I can, and that looks good. Now look. Look what happens. The greeting pops up, and that white area on the back is for you to stamp a very small sentiment. So use itty-bitty greetings or sign your name. But let's add our butterfly because for me, that's like the special, special part. Let's flip this over. We're gonna add a few more dimensionals. So let me grab those here. I've got one here for the bottom, one here for this wing. So on the bottom two wings is where you're gonna to wanna to place them. And I'm gonna add one here at the bottom of the belly. And then we're gonna remove that paper backing one more time because you don't want adhesive near here because remember, this is kind of a 3D type of card. So you're going to want to rest those large wings inside that crease. Again, making sure that we don't cover up all of our greeting. And then we're just going to press. Now, I know you're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, this, this fits in an envelope. It absolutely fits perfectly in an envelope because this extension is not more than four and a quarter. It's going to fit amazing. Isn't this fantastic? 
really, really, really different and quite a showpiece. Now, I have a couple other samples I want to share with you. Take a look at this. This is the exact same fun fold, and this is the exact same bundle of products with those exclusive designer series papers. Look at the color combination and the we can sell on this. This is Melon Mambo and Bermuda Bay. Now, let's talk one more time about those designer series papers. You remember I told you about these? These are only available during the promotion, but there is one more type of designer series paper that's available too. This absolutely stunning natural birch designer series paper. I wish you were here to feel it. It has a slight waxy, realistic kind of feel to it. It's going to be fantastic for your backgrounds, including for scrapbooking. It's going to be beautiful layered on top of these vibrant colors. Just look at that. You're going to get two sheets of that in a package. It's priced perfectly at $5. You cannot beat it. So you're going to want to add those designer series papers when you add this bundle of products because they're only available for a limited time. Now, before you join me today, I always practice my card. I know you probably think that's crazy because I want to be able to teach it effectively. And I did make one more, and this is exclusive for the live and the video. It is not part of the project sheet, but here is one more color combination. Look at those wings, will you please? This, is, believe it or not, is Misty Moonlight and Bermuda Bay. Again, more designer series paper for this card. Such a pretty, pretty fun fold. And it is freestanding. And remember, this is called the Double Diamond Fold. There is going to be a flyer available tomorrow for these products that are going to be over on my website. You're going to see it under Butterfly Bouquet, and you're going to see a sample. And then if you click, it'll lead you over tomorrow when all this starts so that you can scoop up all these fantastic projects. You are not going to want to miss getting this designer series paper. Again, it's only available during the promotion. This is only available during the promotion. All right, so here is the card we created today. We got a couple other samples here. I'm trying to keep them flat because I know they're meant to be 3D cards. Really beautiful. Which one of these do you favor in color? I would love to know. Leave me a comment below, and I'm going to flip the camera around and give you a little bit more information about the next live. Oh, I love your, I love reading your replies. It's so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. This is a, a fantastic card, regardless of what color that you make it in. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be one they're going to leave displayed for a very, very long time. Okay. Mark your calendars and make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm coming back live with you next week. Please do me a favor before you go, not only hit the like button, because that certainly helps. But if you would, share tonight's video with your crafting friends over on Pinterest, on Facebook. It certainly helps to keep us here with free content that we absolutely love sharing with you. All the supplies can be found at lisastampstudio.com. I got excited. lisastampstudio.com underneath the shop button. And don't forget to check out my exclusive rewards. I'm coming back to you live on Wednesday of next week, which is March 10th already. And you are not going to want to miss this moving fun fold. I've got some great projects in store for you as well with the fun fold too. So you're going to see lots and lots of ideas. And I hope you'll mark your calendar to join me. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Remember to head over to my website and check out that project sheet so that you can get that template so you can replicate this at home. Nice and nice and easy. Megan, thanks for your hard work tonight and interaction with everyone. And thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take good care. Bye-bye.